92.3 Amp Radio. 92.3 Amp Radio, it's your boy in the morning. We're live from our StubHub stage with one of our favorite artists, one of your favorite artists. Just a, a quick little introduction. The youngest solo artist and the only New Zealander to achieve number one on the Billboard Hot 100 since 1987. Wow. With Royal and team now ready to drop her new album, Melodrama, on June 16th. Give it up for Lord, everybody. Come on now. <laughs> Hi. How are you doing? Hi, thanks for having me. I wanted to say about your album dropping because I just saw like a, it was like a little video promoting the fact that you're going to be on SNL. Yeah. And they kept saying, yeah, it's going to drop. It's going to yeah, drop. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like kind of making fun of that guy. He kept saying drop because yeah. he's trying to be cool. Yeah, that's uh... So you wanted to be cool too and get in the drop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. I'm excited for SNL. It's going to be so much fun. When was the last time you did it? Because you did do it the last I with round. Disclosure? No, I did it with Disclosure. Yeah, I, I didn't do it by myself. But, oh. uh, yeah, I was like, I wanted to do it when I was, like, really ready. And I'm so ready now to do it. Do you feel ready or do you feel nervous? I feel that... really ready. Good. <laughs> I mean, maybe I should feel more nervous, but I just... They make you feel so at home. Uh, I think when you're Lord and you've crushed it like that for so many years, I think you feel all right. Well, thank you. I, I, yeah, of course. She has every right to feel all right. Oh, right? thanks, guys. I think we got to celebrate by, we are talking before we kicked off, about doing some snow angels. This is the first time you catch the snow in NYC. We are going to do some snow angels, and they're definitely going to be successful. We're going to do great snow angels. They're not going <laughs> to not work. They're not going to not work. They're going to be, like, so heavenly and whatnot. We're going to drop those snow definitely angels. definitely going to be snow on the ground when we Absolutely. go out there, not just the rain. <laughs> She's really wishing for it. I'm wishing. Lord, um, I just want to say that like, I truly admire you as an artist, but also as a person, because I think it takes uh, a very courageous and very, very honest person to be at the top of the music game like you have been in the past, and all of a sudden say, you know what? I'm going to take a break. <laughs> and that's scary. I think uh, a lot of artists do the opposite. I'm at the top of the game. I don't want anybody else to come on top. So I'm going to work even harder and harder and harder. But we've seen people like uh, Adele take breaks. Ed Sheeran, we just hung out with him lately. He mm. had a blast mm. uh, taking a break. Um, Taylor Swift seemed taking a break. What made you decide to, you know what? I am at the top, but I'm going to take a break. I mean, I knew that I had to go away. And I think this happens to a lot of us just live some life before I could write another record. I didn't want to write another record from the perspective of the age that I was and the spot where I was. You know, I'd been on tour for two years. I was like, I have to go and just disappear and, and live yes. and see what happens and, and write about it. Um, and it was amazing. One of the most interesting things uh, uh, I know in a recent interview you said, it's crazy when you're so young to be spending all your time in L.A. or New York. I think it can kind of F with you <laughs> if you're a kid. Fool with you. Full with you. <laughs> yes. There's the edit. Yes, full with you. What were you afraid would happen if you would have stuck around? I just, I mean, I think that I would have, it's very easy to just, to go out every night and to kind of, I mean, but I did that in New Zealand too. I guess, I don't know, I guess I felt like, um, I don't know, the, the, you meet a lot of amazing people in the industry, but also sometimes, um, you know, you talk about work all the time, you talk about, like, what's going on in the chats or whatever, you know, and I was like, I just need to go and, like, hang out with my friends from high school and literally throw lemons around in my backyard, which we did once for two hours. Like, it's, it's just talk about, like, don't even ask. I, <laughs> these, the boys that I'm friends with can entertain themselves in the strangest with ways. With lemons. Lemons off my tree. We just tossed lemons. Like, I was like, we just did the dumbest, funnest stuff for most fun stuff so for a long easy. time. Like, did you throw them, like, onto the street? No, we were just throwing them like back cars? and forth. It's hard to explain. Yeah. I think we had been drinking. It was fun. It was really You fun. don't need to explain anymore. <laughs> now we understand. <laughs> Besides throwing lemons uh, during your break, what would you say was one of, like, the most epic memories that you're going to live with forever thanks to the fact that you took that break? Like, I know when we're hanging out with Ed Sheeran, he was telling us that, you know, from traveling all around the world with his girlfriend to almost burning his foot off. Oh, my God. He was climbing some type of volcano of some sort, <gasps> stuck his foot in, like, this yeah. volcanic crater. Oh, no. And legit, his boot melted. No. Yeah. And almost burnt it off. Well, and he got the, the little scar here since he was away. He's been in the wars. He went right? hard. <laughs> a knighting accident the or knighting something? Um, what was, I mean, I had like a really, I didn't like travel a bunch or anything. I had a lot of, so I moved into my own house. Um, oh, back congratulations. Home. Thank you, which was amazing. Um, and I did what you do when you move into your house and you're 19 and you're like through a bunch of parties. And I'm like kind of known for like throwing these amazing parties. But what would always happen, so I have this swimming pool, and 
I, one day I like turned on the light in the swimming pool and it was this purple light. It's like something out of a sci-fi movie. It's like the, cra like literally the entire, all the water is just purple at night. And so something that happens at my parties, it doesn't, again, it's like, it doesn't sound fun, but uh, everyone is always like in the pool at three in the morning and it's like this crazy purple light and it's like 50 people in the pool. So that's like my equivalent of getting my foot burnt off. <laughs> so you didn't burn your foot, but that's fun though. It, it's fun. It was, it was fun. That was the kind of stuff that I was like, I'm going to be thinking about this when I'm like thumbing through the room service menu in the middle of the night in yeah. America. Well, because if you think about it too, like at that age, a lot of people are in college and they're doing the house parties or totally. frat parties yeah, or whatever. Yeah. So it's like you kind of had your own frat party. I felt at your very home. college. I was like, this yeah. is what I'm doing. It was like a little red cups <laughs> around. Okay. Yeah. Gotta do it. <laughs> you guys do like beer pong in New Zealand? We, well, I don't have a table, but I am weirdly quite good at beer pong. Um, but people do a lot of drinking games. I kind of missed out on the drinking games yeah. um, because I was like, young and oh, i was like kind right. of away i was working and you're 20 right here i'm too but well, it's don't drink, yeah i can't drink here i can't yeah. go out anywhere but but there yeah it's 18 so she's like yeah. she's good I mean, it's, okay. and it's her own house she's good yeah. <laughs> um also obviously during that time off you took time to write this epic album melodrama that we're so stoked about and i mean it's out in the open a lot of it speaks about heartbreak and then when nina and i were looking into your music we're researching Nina's like, this girl is speaking to me right now. Oh. Like, yeah, totally. I know it's that, oh, dang, that feeling sucks. <laughs> but, I mean, you hear green light, but then when you dropped liability, I had that on repeat. Oh, because there was something that you said, if you guys haven't had a chance to listen to liability yet, there's something that she talks about, about feeling like you're too much for somebody, mm. that you're just too much. Do you truly feel that way about yourself? I mean, part of the idea of melodrama as an album is, is all of these um, crazy kind of of the top colorful feelings you have when you're, you know, this age and you're just like, this is the worst thing in the world. You know, yeah. nothing could ever be worse than this. And then it's gone yeah. the next day. Like, <laughs> right. and, and this song was very much like, you know, I was like sitting on my couch feeling sorry for myself and wrote a bunch of stuff down. But um, yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. I'm so, I feel so connected to this record, um, which is a nice way to feel. I, everything I'm like, it's such a direct line to, to, something I was feeling or to like a really amazing memory. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting to uh, get it all out there properly. And then I also read that it was inspired by Rihanna's song, Higher. Well, <laughs> which is kind of funny because again, if you haven't heard Rihanna's song, that song is basically talking about like a glorified booty call. Like that's the whole time. yeah. That's I like the I like the <laughs> contrast of music you're listening to in your room, Nina. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you From could feeling only sorry see for yourself me by myself yeah, yeah. to a glorified booty call. That's yeah, well, that was what I was listening to in this. I say, you know, crying in the taxi, and I had yeah, that song yeah, on, yeah. and I was like, <laughs> so it kind of. Uh, it's not really so musically inspired by that, but definitely that was the like feeling. what made me, yeah, I was like, oh, <laughs> that so was what, the context. What were you thinking about? So you were listening to it, crying in a taxi. <laughs> where did that take you, though? Like, where in your life the did... Taxi oh, yeah, like, the taxi or that moment? No, not the, not the taxi. <laughs> yeah, where are you going, girl? <laughs> no, but I mean, in your mind, you know, your experiences, that connected with you so hard. Like, what was it that triggered those tears? I don't know. I just, I mean, that song is so beautiful and sad and um you know obviously like break up uh conscious i feel um and i don't know the weirdly my song is less about a breakup but more i almost when i was writing and i remembered how it felt at high school when when yeah. you just you were like am i just the biggest pain like do, do, do people even like me am i just taking up space you know mm -hmm. and um yeah, I guess that's that's kind of what I was feeling more than anything. But yeah, yeah. who's who's your go-to person when you're feeling like that that you call up I right away? Person. Yeah, and you talk <laughs> like to them and you confide in them that. and and they help you out. Like who's been there for you throughout these last couple of years that you've been feeling this? Ooh, I mean, I have great sisters. My mom. Hi, mom. Where is she? Where is she's she? in here somewhere. Oh, your mom's here. Happy belated birthday. Where's she at? Where is she? Oh, she's, 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 not she's gone. Anymore. She's gone. Oh, yeah, she's outside birthday. doing snow angels already. Yes, she's she's more excited about she's the snow than I am. Throwing yeah. lemons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, New Zealand. That's uh, that's what we do. Yeah, yeah. No, probably. I mean, I'm so close with my family. Um, yeah. Um, would you say that you're a hopeless romantic? No, I'm very cynical. I'm the last person to fall in love. I'm like, don't like me. Don't come over here. <laughs> I'm like, you don't like me. I'm not. That's me. Really? Yeah, that's me. So it's not playing hard to get. 
no, I'm like, no, you don't want to get into this. <laughs> this is too I'm much like, for you to I'm handle. Like, I'm, I'm like, telling you. I'm too, much of a, I'm too much of a liability. I, no, I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, uh, I mean, okay. especially like young boy. I'm like, mm, no, no. So, I hear you, girl. I totally do. Would you say you like more like older, more mature men then? Rather than, because you're 20 or whatnot. If somebody were to come at you. Listen, who knows? Who yeah. knows? Um, if you were to choose one Disney princess that you relate to the most, which one would it be? Like Disney movies and all that. Oh, um, one Disney princess that I relate to. I don't know if I remember like relating to it. Yeah. I remember thinking Pocahontas was badass. Oh, because she is. She was very cool. She was, uh, she was in that canoe on the waterfall and kind of, right, she was very like in nature. And I feel like I'm always like, I have my shoes off and I'm like running around. It's really what happened in Pocahontas. No, I just, yeah, she's she probably her. Yeah. But the, the picture you're painting of yourself in New Zealand, I'm picturing yeah. you running around barefoot in your yeah, yard, yeah, yeah, jumping yeah. into a purple pool. Yes, yes. So, yeah. lemons. But that's what we're getting to know. Like, <laughs> I love that because it really shows that deep down inside, you're just like a super humble, down to earth girl that you just want to <laughs> chill out barefoot, play around with some lemons in it, and just chill out in some purple pool water. My friends are going to die at this lemons thing. They're going to be like, Ella, <laughs> you've told the whole world that we are so lame. No. We do fun stuff as well sometimes. Yeah, no, I just, I'm, yeah, I, I love, um, I love just going back to, I don't know, where I grew up and I get a lot out of it. What would you say, um, you know, if melodrama, right, so the album musically, if, if it were just like a, like, like a book, right? So like a novel, if you will, okay. and people are reading the back of it. Okay. Like, what do you think melodrama is saying? Like, if you just had to put it on the back of a book. I like, what's would. What's the message to everybody? Well, it. I would. I would say. Um, oh, shit, that's a really sorry. That's a oh, really good. good. Uh, that's a good question. I would. Um, I would say if you want to know uh, what a nineteen-year-old girl was up to for a year, open these pages. And I would say. Um, I mean, for me, melodrama is really. Last year was so crazy for everyone. It was such an intense year. Um, and it was a really uh, vivid backdrop to be writing this very personal music against, you know, this kind of politically so turbulent. Yeah, um, yeah. And everyone, I feel like, everyone I know really kind of got closer together as a result of this kind of cool. crazy year. So I feel like, um, yeah, it's a mixture of that big picture and the, the little stuff as well. So... Yeah, I don't know. Thank you for being so courageous to pour that out. You know what I'm saying? And just be like, hey, this is truly what was on my heart. This was on my mind. Yeah. Here you go. I get to share it with you. And I think that's why people love you so much because they see the rawness, they see the uh, really how, how transparent you are <laughs> with who you are, you know? And uh, we appreciate that of you. What are you most oh, thank you. excited about for 2017? We know you got SNL. SNL, yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Oh, oh, holy moly. We, we have you here also at Governor's Ball. Yes. I'm and Coachella. What do you, what, what Coachella. do you love about festivals the most? Oh, my God. Well, people really get me at festivals. People, for some reason, I people are like, yeah, that's what I want to go hang out <laughs> with. I love festivals. I love running around and seeing my friends perform. I love, like, being on the golf cart, like, zipping around, like, stage to stage. I am so down with the festival, and I cannot wait. It's the best workplace a festival like uh, yeah, just like, like a cruising party. around like it's super fun do you have any plans set for some of your friends that are maybe playing at the other festivals while you're there like who are you super excited Who's to playing? see um who am i excited to see? well i love chance and we are playing a oh, lot yeah. of festivals together this summer cool. so i'm excited to um just go up and uh, have a boogie at a chance concert. Um, <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Who else is playing? Oh, God. So many amazing. Uh, you, you, have a you were going to see Beyonce. I was going to see Beyonce. But the <laughs> twins had to block it. I mean, bless you know? the twins. I'm, uh, I'm oh, so thankful for the twins. I'm, uh, They're royalty. That was my happiest moment of 2017. I ran into the room with Jack Antonoff, my co-writer. Yeah. I'd been working on a lyric for like an hour by myself. And I, I said, Beyonce's having twins. This is the best thing that has happened to me. And they were like, yes, yes, the internet already knows. I kind of, I brought it to them as if like, I, I had just discovered this kind of, I was like, but, it, but my reaction was just like, oh, this is what I want. It's <laughs> so true. I did the same thing to you. Are you so excited? I did the exact same thing. Little outfits. Dude, she's I'm so excited to see the little so outfits. Wait, you already put it together outfits for Beyonce's no, twins? I'm daydreaming about the outfits oh, that they're going to be wearing. You know they're going to be geared out. Gucci, Are you kidding like, me? It's going to be so 
this set. Damn. I'm excited. I, I We're all having twins. Yeah. What? That's what it feels like. I need to introduce you to my baby daughter. She's three months old. Oh my goodness, congratulations. Thank you so much, but I like what you, you said. Are you sleeping at all? Uh, no, I'm no. getting like four hours of sleep a night. Yeah. But you know what? Um, and I think that joy that you guys see <laughs> through Beyonce's twins. <laughs> yeah. You really feel. You, you I got it. to experience that. Yeah. And it's just like a whole nother dimension. Oh. You know love as it is here in life. And then when you see your first child come into the world, love's over here. It's like oh. to a whole nother dimension. So. I love it. I love it. Kind of like what you <laughs> felt for Beyonce's twins. Yes. Yes. The yeah, unborn. It's exciting. The yeah, unborn. I haven't even been born yet. Imagine <laughs> that right. moment. I love them. I love them. <laughs> she's back. She's oh. fresh. New look. She's going to do it. I love it. Thank you so much, Lord. Thank, we love thank you, girl. you, Lord.